The race to represent Ward 1 in Las Vegas is down to its final two, and we're talking with one of the candidates right here on Nevada Politics Today. I'm your host, Victor Jakes. Robin Minier has worked as a special liaison for the Las Vegas City Council. She now wants to be on the City Council. She's also a past president of the Nevada PTA. Robin, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me, Victor. It's my pleasure to be here. I, I want to start with the Badlands issue. Uh, developer Johan Lowy bought what used to be the, the Badlands golf course uh, and now wants to develop on it. Uh, should he be allowed to, to build on Badlands? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a question that um, I have encountered. Uh, the 20 weeks that I have been walking, I've only had one, one constituent that asked about it, and he owns property out there. Um, I, you know, that's not for Ward 1. Uh, I'm going to be representing Ward 1 residents, and I have to really be uh, in tune to what they want to have happen for their cells, because right now so with Lowy the courts... So should be allowed to, to build something there? Well... You, sooner or later he probably will because the courts will probably rule in some form or fashion but there's still lawsuits not even determined by the courts and until they settle all of that it would be uh, a gross waste of time for the city council and money which we've already seen I've seen abundance of that three years now and you know all the time spent trying to determine and everything being taken back to the courts again so it's really kind of futile at this point until all of that litigation has been decided so I mean that litigation would end if the city council reversed itself and let him build on on the land is that is that what the city council should do your voters are, are wanting to make it a decision about you know which candidate to support. Johan sued the city for two hundred fifty million dollars. It's not just the residents of Ward of Ward Two. That's all. You know, the whole city would be responsible for that. Shouldn't they know where you stand on on if he should be allowed to develop? Well, I don't know where I stand completely on it because I don't know what the courts have decided, nor was I privileged to all the confidential briefings that my councilwoman was and that the other council members. I, as a special assistant, they excused us from those meetings, so I do not have that information. So I cannot tell you what I would do without that information. So on your website, you talk about the importance of economic development. You say, you know, Las Vegas is rife with economic development opportunities. Are, are you concerned about the message you send to developers w when the city council is, is stymieing the Badlands development? Do you think they're not going to develop it? That absolutely concerns me, and that's not the only area that there is concern in. That does concern me, and that's why I say we have to see what the courts rule, because, yes, we are a city that depends on not only entertainment but economic development. We have to have even more economic development in the medical district. We have to have it in our outlying areas and the other wards. I feel like that the people that live in those wards and the person elected to represent them is my guide. I need to go with what information, you know, and what they're thinking. That doesn't mean that I will do my homework as well. But yes, we have to protect our citizens, number one, but we also have to ensure that our developers, once they're given the go-ahead that they're able to go ahead and develop so that's the problem with the Badlands situation I don't know all the details and I wasn't in every city council meeting where all of that was discussed so all for right. me well, let's to, let's let's jump to something else on your website you talk about the you want to bring new new technologies and new ideas to, to mobility uh, to increase mobility in mm. Las Vegas what, what does that look like well for me that would look like um, a, a, a more uh, economic uh, development with possibly a uh, speed train or a bus down West Charleston or down Rancho, which is areas that we have looked at. I know that they're working on the RTC for going from the airport down to the uh, UNLV to uh, the Boulevard Mall and then also over to the medical district because we and the councilwoman asked very strongly to have that included. Originally that was not included in it. And that allows people from the campus UNLV that allows other people to get into the medical district into downtown and that is absolutely wonderful for the downtown and economic development there in other ways as well. That really doesn't do much for the citizens of Ward 1 and I keep going back to that because as a citizen of Ward 1 for 35 years and being involved in it as I have from the time my children were babies in the early 80s. So, so what were you doing? That's their concern. Their concern is how to get downtown without the traffic problems. So um, there has been talk of doing a private partner, public partnership with some in, um, corporations to do a 
a train, rail, from out west, um, from like Westcliff or out in that area, straight down Charleston to the downtown area or to at least the BTC, the bus terminal there. Uh, right now there are so many, there have been studies done <clears throat> of the amount of cars with everybody driving in to work, whether it be at the, the um, uh, a, a building downtown, a law firm, whether it be, you know, casinos, whatever in the area, the amount of cars that take up parking space all day long downtown that don't go anywhere for eight to ten hours at a time. These are places that could be used for development. Instead of a parking garage, it could be something developed there that would bring more economic development, more jobs, more opportunities if the people could ride a train. I uh, lived I, in... I, I want to jump to it to a different topic here. Let's talk uh, about short-term rentals. You know, in December, the the city council passed some pretty severe restrictions on platforms like Airbnb. Uh, where, where do you stand on that? Is it, were those restrictions appropriate or should they be lessened, increased? Okay, the short-term rentals is, other than safety, the number one issue in with the Ward 1 constituents. We have been inundated with the party homes they were in the beginning since um, the um, 80s. I mean, uh, since night. Uh, since 2008, I'm sorry, and um, we have had the problem with them. The genie is out of the bottle now as far as with the platforms like Airbnb and things like that. But there's ways to restrict that, and I know that um, uh, my opponent says that when you call, there isn't anyone that will come for the complaint. That is not true. The city spent almost a half a million dollars enforcing the regulations on short-term rentals last year. Now, can they come to everyone if there's five at, you know, at one calls at one time? Probably not. So that means that we need to look for more resources to enforce the rules that we have on the books. But you like now, those rules that are currently in place? I think that... that any of the rules and stuff, I would like to form an ad hoc committee, again, like we did with the uh, billboard signs, and that's part of what I have been um, uh, professing to do is have an ad hoc committee with both the, we have some great short-term rental operators, absolutely fantastic ones, and people don't even know it's a short-term rental. And then we have the, the bad actors, unfortunately, and it's like the uh, an allergy, the bad apple, the, you know, in the barrel. But um, I think if we can form a committee and work together with other council members who have a similar already uh, that are on the council um, um, viewpoint of this, that we can work together and find areas there are some neighborhoods that are they're fine with the short term rentals and then there are other neighborhoods that you know they've lived there for 45 years and they don't want Motel 6 next door to them. Right. Nothing against Motel 6. You know they leave the light on for you. Yeah. But <laughs> let, let me let me jump to, to public safety here. You mentioned that as, as oh, another mm -hmm. priority. Of course. Uh, do, do the residents of Ward 1 feel safe and if not what should what should be done? No, that's a concern that they bring up. That is the number one concern. That's what I was saying, you know, not the Badlands. And that's my job is to address that. They don't feel safe in our parks right now. They don't feel safe in grocery store parking lots. I mean, I hear stories. They don't even feel safe with their children going to schools now. Look at what's just happened with all the guns and the acquisitions of those and stuff. So that is their main concern. My, what I have done is to try to help, uh, starting with working under Councilwoman Tarkanian, 27 neighborhood associates associations where they learn the resources that the city has. They learn the resources that Metro ha has for them to be able to educate themselves to be safer, educate themselves of who to call and when. You know, when you can call the school district police, people will think that they can't be engaged and they right. can. A lot of those things. I think that we have to look for resources and, and things for our uh, actual patrol officers to have um, better opportunities to react and um, stuff. We just put on 12 new officers, but they all went to the strip and we need to have more in the neighborhoods actually, you know. And then there's the first Tuesday that we try to inform the neighborhood area people that are engaged and want to become more engaged. The Metro, every one of their commands has a first Tuesday meeting of uh, the first Tuesday of every month. And the citizens can go there and there's so much that they can learn and so much that the police also learn from having the, the individuals that live in the neighborhoods tell them where the hot spots are. Does it's impossible to, to know that without that engagement. Does there need to be an increase Increased police presence, uh, just with patrol yes, and, officers. Yes, and and the residents need to, you know, it's a two-way street. You know, they, you know, it, there's an opportunity for them to help each other, and that's the way we achieve things. Is if we work together and help each other. Back to the 
billboard scenario or anything else. You have to work together. You have to bring the two sides to the table to discuss what the real problems are, what the wants and what the don't wants are and what the needs are. And we're going to have to leave it there. Robin, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure being thank here. You. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We're off next week, but I'll see you again in two weeks right here on Nevada Politics Today.